In today's video, I'm going to be fitting this glove box to this smart car. This is my new glove box. This was supplied by Jordan Kuhn. His details are in the description below and his number is also on screen right now. He is a very useful contact as he breaks these cars, so feel free to give him a call if you need anything for your car. There are three parts to these glove boxes. There's the lid, the frame, and then there's the backing, which will already be there on your car if it doesn't currently have a glove box. I've opted just to change the whole thing because it's easier, but there are other ways of doing it. You can just buy the lid and the frame and then drill and fit it to the existing housing. But I don't need to do that. The glove box lids are removable. You simply extract the pins. And then it can be removed. This gives you a better view of the frame in this shot here, which screws into the housing. It fits into these slots here and also underneath here. If you're modifying an existing housing, you may have to drill these holes to enable it to be fitted. This wouldn't normally be here, but somebody had drilled a 12 millimeter hole in the side of this housing, likely for a cable, an aux cable or something like that. Uh, I just fitted a grommet to tidy it up. It's quite useful to have if you want something in here that requires power. Now I know that my key won't fit this, so this won't be lockable at this time. However, I do have a new lock barrel made up to the key number coming from the smart dealership. More about that later. To refit this lid, it simply slots back in there and then we refit these pins. They just slide in like that. To begin, we need to remove this switch panel. To gain access to a T25 just inside here. This allows this radio surround trim to be removed, just like I had to do when I fitted these dash pods in the last video, link in the description below. We now need to remove the radio, four T25s. I'm going to unplug this radio so I can get it right out of the way. I know that this radio nine doesn't have a code, I'm also going to disconnect this because we are going to have to remove this lower part of the dashboard and this will need to be out of the way. All you do is push this little tab in here, this hinges round and it's off. In order to remove this housing and fit the glove box we do need to remove this lower dash trim assembly. Now that looks far worse than it actually is because it really is just a case of removing these dash end trims and then undoing various screws and this is quite easy to remove. To remove these dash trims we first undo a T20 under here. There is a clip here that goes inwards and it pulls away. Same for the other side. Staying with the right hand side, screw here and moving closer to the middle, you've just got these two here as well. Got the larger T25 there and also this smaller T20 which secures this panel. Very similar on the left, one here. Inboard side, again remove. Moving up top, we need to remove these two and these T25s. And then just at the end here, we've got a screw each side, another T25. The lower trim engages here through three clips. We need to disengage those. And the same on this side. 
it's then just a case of disengaging this from the top edge and separating it from around the cigar lighter here. There are two polystyrene foam pads that are designed to protect your knees in a collision. These will drop down. There's a little clip here. Three T20s here. And remove this one on the end. This now allows us to remove this housing. Taking a look at the new glove box, you can see the fixings to the car. One up there, one there, and then two either side of the bottom there. C25s. This can be a little bit harder to get, so you have to kind of bend this back a bit. And finally, at the top, two clips. It is free. With this out the way, this gives you a good insight to the construction of the car. You can see the top of the SAM unit right there. And you may remember a while back I replaced this heater control unit because I had some issues with uh, it not holding temperature. I mentioned at the time how important it was not to disconnect a cable at the heater box. Well now you can see the cable, it's right there. And if I turn this heater controller, change the direction, you can see the effect it has under here. These cars continue to amaze me with the way they're put together. It really does slot in that easily. Screw holes line up. There's a little locating dowel here and the lower screw holes all line up too. With the four screws tightened, we can refit these top clips. With these two T20s refitted, we can now refit this cover. This little piece here slots into the edge of that duct. Screw it back into position. With everything re-secured, we can refit this. slots in here and here and clips into position here and the same on the other side it's now time to fit this dash lower trim and the hardest part about it is getting it to fit around the cigar lighter if these little threaded retainer pieces that the screws go into fell off when you remove this lower panel don't forget to put them back they go onto the hole that's closest to the edge so it's that one for this side and the other side it's there. I find it easier to go in with the top edge first and then we can work on the underside ensuring that this fits back into place. These can be relocated. For alignment purposes you can usually see where the screw has compressed the fabric and it's a good idea to uh, Ensure the trim is in the same place as before when you tighten the screw. Screws at the ends. And that smaller T20 that screws into that little pink plastic retainer. Same on the other side. Can now refit these.
dashboard lower trim is all back into position and everything's tight. We can now refit the radio. Reconnect the aerial. And just retighten. This is a slight deviation from the uh, video, I know, but quite a few people have mentioned that these buttons go really sticky, and they do. In fact, when this radio was just leaning against uh, my knee, it left that behind. And I don't think that's gonna come off. It's really sticky. Now, I've been told you can use some um, isopropyl alcohol and actually remove this stickiness, but unfortunately, it just leaves a white button behind. I know white's not ideal, but I'm gonna get rid of that stickiness now with some of this uh, isopropyl alcohol, uh, and we can see how that turns out. So this is what I'm using, the microfiber cloth. It does seem to be dissolving it, actually. I know it's not gonna look nice with the white, but it's probably, or arguably, better than a, a nasty, sticky thing. I should probably be wearing gloves while I'm doing this. Let's get some gloves. Right, gloves, we're protected. I'm not sure if that could be absorbed through the skin. You'd soon know if my conduct throughout the video just got progressively more slurred. Maybe like the man is drunk. Okay, this is coming off quite nicely. I don't want to damage these buttons. I'm not sure what effect it will have on them anyway, if any. It might only attack the sticky surfaces. Not very exciting TV, is it? I'll probably speed this bit up. And here we have our conclusion. No more stickiness. We now have a white knob. Maybe I could paint that at some point. Back to the video. Glove boxes. This surround can now be refitted. Get that in there first at the bottom. Refit this T25 screw. Reconnect. The connector. And refit that. And that is job done. We got a nice functional glove box. And a nice clean knob. And now what we need to do is to fill it with as many gloves as possible. Why is it called a glove box anyway? Who wears gloves to drive in 2024? Well, that's it for another video. And if you've watched this and you now think you want a glove box for your car, you know what to do. Give Jordan Kuhn a call. Details in the description below for this video. And he can hopefully provide you with a glove box for your car. There are two types. There's an earlier type like I've just fitted and there's also a later type where the silver uh, trim goes further across. Um, but I think they're fairly interchangeable. Thank you very much for watching. I look forward to seeing you again in another video very soon.